In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how fake the work environment is and how you should be able to navigate through this fake environment. Because corporate jobs are fake, just like most of this system is fake. And if you're a real person navigating through a fake world, in this video, we'll go through some funny clips and give you some useful advice. I work in corporate America and nothing I do is real. If you put a gun to my head and asked me to explain what I do all day, I still wouldn't be able to tell you. Apparently, the whole purpose behind the meaningless tasks that I do all day is that it's supposed to increase the company's value for shareholders. It's a shame that with the company's salary that they pay me, I can't even afford to be a shareholder myself. I digress. I only accepted this position to pay off the student loans that I owe. Which leads me to my next point. Who benefited the most from me going to college? Myself? or the US federal government. I think it's the latter. Not only do I have to dedicate a significant portion of my adult life to paying off these loans, I have to buy into this screwed up system by getting a job that I hate and becoming another rat in this corporate rat race. So there you go, right? So he's giving a funny uh, representation of how the work is fake. You have tons of fake work, fake performance goals, fake report writing, fake performance reviews. It's all based on popularity and favoritism rather than the actual quality of work. You might, there's a phrase, I pretend to work and my manager pretends to pay me, right? Or I pretend to work and my company pretends to pay me in the sense that you do lots of fake pointless work. The company will pay you in, in terms of fake paper money, which we can see is increasingly worthless through the impact of inflation. And you should always think about you know, if the company is saying, oh, you've got to work hard to generate profit for the shareholders. As he says here, often you can't uh, afford to buy the shares of the company if you are maybe a junior employee on low pay. One of my corporate girly friends was saying to me a couple of weeks ago that she does all her work at one time and then she goes to sleep and then wakes up periodically to shake her cursor to the teams to so that she's still active. And I said to her, if you're not working, if there's nothing for you to do, why are you bothering? She's like, it's what I'm contracted to do. It's like, you could have so much freedom to do all of these other things. You've done all of the work that is allotted to you and you're just supposed to pretend that you're doing other work. What do they think you're doing? And that's when I realized everyone should be a bloody contractor because capitalism just wastes your time. Capitalism, the traditional nine to five working structure is bloody, it's cruel. It's not natural, it's inhumane as one of my clients said to me the other day. It's inhumane, you're supposed to be tied to a desk to be working perpetually for eight hours when there is an eight hours worth of work. But then you're supposed to seek out this additional work and show you're proactive to prove your value to this organization that's already exploiting you for your time and money. Self-employment all the way. If you're gonna work for a business or for a company, be a contractor, so don't waste your bloody time. Don't so I, I get what she's saying, I get what she's saying, but um, the point here is not necessarily about being a contractor, it's just the work in general, it's pointless and fake. And if you're smart and you're efficient, you can get the work done as quick as you can and then send it to your manager spread out pace and what I mean by that is if you're given five tasks by your manager and you can do those five tasks in one day don't do those five tasks in one day and send it to your manager because you can work quicker will just get you dumped with more work and more feedback on that work to improve it so if you're given five pieces of work you can maybe complete it all in one day if you want but then send one piece of work to them on Monday one on Tuesday one on Wednesday one on Thursday one on Friday or spread it out every couple of days so you give the impression that it's taking you longer to do that work so you have more time you can take care of your health particularly if you work from home, you can rest and you can basically work at your own pace rather than a super fast pace where you're not gonna get paid more for that. So it's important to rest, work at a decent pace. And if your corporate job is fake, you leverage that to benefit you rather than complain about it, which I've done, which other people have done, is kind of leverage that. Oh, if the work's fake, then I'm gonna work at a fake fast pace. I'm gonna work hard, but I'm gonna fake working hard. Oh, I'm so busy, I've got so many emails to do. This is the type of impression you have to give when you, even when you don't have a lot of work to do, right? So you should always focus on you know, having, in a sense, less work to do, more money, a better quality of life by doing less work, right? Because it's not, what they're pointing out here is not necessarily about capitalism. The system's no longer about capitalism. Capitalism would mean you work harder and then you succeed on the basis of your competency and your merit and your ability to provide value to people. It's more about this modern workplace. It's more about equality, DI, femin feminism, liberalism, a fake work, a fake system, because it's fake money, right? Everything's fake. Everything's about perception and not reality. And now the benefits of being self-employed versus working for someone is like she says if you are a contract worker you could 
Firstly, if you're self-employed in general, you can work on your own terms and obviously there is a risk that you're not going to get paid if you can't find work, if you can't find clients, things like that. But if you are self-employed, then effectively what you can do is you work on your own work hours and then how you want and when you want. Let's edit that out. Now, when it comes to um, working as a contractor, our contractors, of course, get paid more and they probably get paid double or triple what the ordinary salary worker would get. But then they're in a bit of a tricky situation where they'd have to save their money because they could deal with periods of unemployment. And that's the very important thing for you to do is to, you know, are a contract worker, save as much money as you can. And if you are more junior in your career, work for corporations, do the standard nine to five type of role, but develop your skills so that later on in your career, maybe in your late 30s, early 40s, or maybe even earlier than that, you could go for contract roles where you get paid a lot more and then you can work maybe for six months out of the year and then take a six month break and go on a holiday or relax because you can do contract work and get paid double and do, and do your job, but get paid a lot more. So let's look at a few other funny examples of this type of scenario. Bloody time. I graduated college two years ago and I started working a full-time job almost immediately. And one of the first things I noticed was that people weren't working a full eight-hour day. Now, I don't mean that people aren't coming to the office for eight hours a day, but what they aren't doing is a full eight-hour productive work day and doing work the entire time they're there. This article I just read shows that Americans do two hours and 53 minutes of actual work, actual productive work per day on average. I remember when I graduated, I thought I was going to be busy for eight hours a day, five days a week. It was just going to be you know, like college where you're in class, you're working, you're listening. There's something always going on. Now, this doesn't apply to teachers or doctors or nurses, obviously, but it's just crazy to me that the average American worker is only busy for half of the workday at most. But I really have to know, is everyone else's job like this? If you work in an office, are you busy for less than half of the day on average? Because the majority of people I ask, this is the case for them. It's crazy that when we're in the office, we're only busy for literally less than half of the time we're there. So that's very interesting, right? In terms of you know, any work you're given, any job you're given is typically four hours maximum productive work a day. You have maybe eight, eight hours in a day. People tend to waste the other four hours, you know, chit-chatting, going for a coffee, things like that. And the truth is most people can't focus on intense productive work for longer than that. Anything beyond the four hours, I would say, is people are typically just responding to emails, doing kind of brain dead, shallow, shallow work. Deep work where you need to deep, intense focus, you're in flow state. You can only do that for four hours maximum a day. And the only reason we have an eight hour work day is Going back to industrialization times, so people would work in factories and do these repetitive tasks, which you could do for eight hours a day without thinking, right? And if you want to watch many of my videos, I talk about why you should stop working hard and you know how you should work at the, the pace of others. If other employees are working slow, you should work at their pace. Don't work extra fast. There's no benefit of that. Your corporate job that you work in is fake. And these are the proof that I'm sharing with you here, right? Like people are just doing pointless work. They're not having to work for several hours a day because there's not enough that not enough work. This system is kind of rigged to create slaves. That's what this system's really about, is controlling your time rather than paying you a decent salary or or doing what they could do, which would be pay you a salary and once you get the work done you can go home. Everything's so fake. Even if you work hard and you work efficiently, you still have to stick around at the office for extra four hours even if you're done. What we're not going to do today is take our jobs too seriously. Unless you are quite literally saving lives, please take your job seriously. If you're a corporate girly, what we're not going to do is take our jobs too seriously. We're not saving lives. There are people out there saving lives. We are not. Let's go to work. Let's do our job. But let's not get so... So she's talking about not getting too caught up in, in the, the work and not taking it too seriously. Now, there's different ways of looking at this, right? I think this whole phrase corporate girly, which is just cringe, but typical you know, AWF of cringe, you know, affluent white female liberal cringe uh, phrases and things. You know, um, I think it's interesting. I think it's an interesting dynamic that your corporate jobs are fake and why they are fake, right? Because if you have highly efficient, competent men just getting the work done, like I say, the work can get done in half the time and people can just spend the rest of the day doing what they want. But because we have to have this bloated company with all these DEI hires and things like that, it makes things inefficient and companies were already inefficient and bureaucratic as it was, right? So it's, it, you have realized that working with a lot of this particular demographic of women, how much time they spend in the office actually not working. So it's kind of surprising that they'd say, oh, let's not take our job seriously. 
this isn't a recent phenomenon. Everyone else I can understand saying they don't want to take their job seriously, but you know this demographic has just been the primary beneficiary of this DEI type of narrative. And what they're doing, and what they do in the office, they don't actually work, do a lot of work. They get the benefits of hiring and promotion, but they spend a lot of time just chit-chatting, gossiping about TV shows, reality TV shows. I remember countless occasions at every company I worked at where I've had to listen to at least one or two cases of women whinging about their uh, husband or their boyfriend but a particular topic in that would be when they get married or even after years they've got years of marriage they refuse to take their husband's last name and they love to pose it as that they're strong and independent or that their husband was complaining that she doesn't take her last name and uh, things like that there's always these typical unnecessarily relationship drama that women bring to the office that you just don't want to hear or tolerate but they expect you to kind of sit through and support now when you realize everything's fake in the workplace environment you end up putting in less effort and focus on your life goals instead of the company's goals you focus on your personal values instead of the corporation's values so that's very important to do now, I've worked for over 10 years in the corporate environment, in investment banking and sales and trading at companies like this. And I offer you a career advice service. My link's in description, you can reach out to me and I can give you honest career advice about dealing with this type of fake corporate jobs and how to navigate this type of very difficult environment where you're surrounded by lies in corporate America and in corporate companies across the West. So thanks for listening. Um, there are two recommended videos on your screen right now. Let me know in the comments how fake your corporate job is and I'll see you in the next video.